In this video, I'm going to show you the process behind making these four effects each more interesting, cooler, and a little more complicated than the last. Many people don't realize the capability of motion graphics in the Fusion tab, so let this video open your eyes to what can be created in surprisingly accessible and achievable ways. First, get your background in. I've just gone with a blue solid color here, and then let's ease in with this first effect, a nice simple arrow animation. To make it, open an adjustment clip, add a multi-merge node in so you can overlay your graphics, a polygon node and a background node. Connect them up like this and then draw an arrow shape with your polygon node. In the inspector of the polygon node, disable the solid checkbox and increase the border width to something you like. At this point, you may want to tweak the positioning of your mask points. Now with the background node, change the colour to something you like, and there you have it. You can also animate the length value on the polygon node from 0 to 1 to get this cool draw on effect by keyframing it as so for about 15 frames. Videos on stuff like how to keyframe and other topics I brush over are in the description. One way you can make any of your animations much more interesting is by adding easing into your animation keyframes. To do this, open the splines window at the top before making sure anything on the left panel here is checked, and then pressing this button here to bring things into view. After scrolling out slightly, you'll be able to select your keyframes just by dragging over them and then pressing this button here to smooth them. Finally, one way to make this slightly more interesting is by setting a gradient from transparent on the background node, moving the gradient start and end points to be in line with the graphic. This gives you a cool effect with something a bit more unique going on. Finally, to top this off, as you'll see in all the effects of this video, I'll apply some glow by searching for it in this menu, shift plus space, and tweak the values to get a nice look. Okay, this next effect can look quite overwhelming at first, but really this is just the same setup as before with an extra node added. Trust me, surprisingly easy. I'll start by laying out the polygon, background, and then glow node as from before. And then in the polygon node, I'm drawing a path out of points before selecting them all by selecting this and dragging over them. And then pressing this button up here to make them smooth. Same as before, I'll disable the solid checkbox, add some border width, change the color to something nice, and tweak the glow. To add the animation before, you remember I had keyframed the length value in the polygon node, but this time I'm going to do a similar thing, just keyframing the position value. First, turn the length value down to about 0.134, and then keyframe the position value from 0 to 1, with the first keyframe being near the start of the clip, and the last one being just over halfway through. Move the starting point of the line so that on the first frame nothing can be seen. Now you will see this line animated across the screen in a small section, making the mask like a path for the animation. To add multiple of these, like I've shown in the final result, pop in a duplicator node and set the values as so, although of course you can tweak these to get exactly the look you like. I'm going to tell it I want 3 copies, offset by 2, and an angle change of 62.6 .6 degrees. These changes will apply to the first copy as written, and then the second copy will have those changes on top of the last, so an extra 62.6 .6 degrees rotation on top of the previous copy. This is the same principle with the gain sliders, and you can see what I've set them to here. This just adds some colour variation between the three, keeping it interesting, and there you have it, a surprisingly cool looking effect for the trouble of four nodes, a duplicator, and a merge. It's time for effect three, and whilst this has a few nodes, they are very similar, so you've really only got about four different types here. To create this, start off by getting the following nodes from the node selector tool, shift plus space. Use this category of nodes called the shape nodes, specifically an S rectangle, S merge, and S render, connecting them up like this, adding them into the multi merge node as with every motion graphic so far. For this S rectangle node, I'll make it a bit smaller, change the color, and put some corner rounding on it. Now I have this, I'm going to add the S Ngon and S Ellipse node all connected in with the S Merge node. The S Ngon node allows you to create a geometric shape with your chosen number of sides, and the S Ellipse node creates a circle. After tweaking these the same and applying some border width to the S Ngon as the alternative to corner rounding, space these apart. You may notice this thing I did here, which is by using expressions linking the two values so as I change the width, it keeps the height the same. To add some extras, I'm also going to copy and paste all of these, connecting them into the S merge node so we have a few more shapes on screen. You can probably now see where this is going, but to add that animation, I'll keyframe each to enter from the closest side of the frame, lasting around 20 frames or so. Whilst this does look interesting, opening the keyframing window here, I'll drag the ending sets of my keyframes so they all animate in at slightly different points. On the line of these keyframes, let's also add some smoothing to all of these, just by opening the spline window as with the first effect and pressing this auto smooth button. Finally, some glow in there and that's about it. Quite a cool effect for your backgrounds in a reasonably easy manner. For stuff like this, understanding keyframes is key, and whilst I do have a really good video on that here, I would honestly recommend just experimenting yourself if you've got the time. 
Okay, what you've been waiting for, the final title animation. Fine, admittedly, looking at these nodes can be a bit overwhelming. However, what you might not realise is that over half these nodes are just copied and pasted straight from the previous effect. To make this, start with the previous effect, realigning the keyframes so they all end at the same point, then placing the playhead over these keyframes, now select these nodes, which is everything up from the multi-merge, and hold shift whilst dragging them to disconnect them from the node tree, connecting a now transparent background node as the new background input for the multi-merge. Then I'm going to add a merge node into the node tree and connect the multi-merge into that, putting us back where we were before, but with this new section of line where we can apply effects to the whole graphic of shapes we've created. But first, to create the text aspect of this, add a text node from the toolbar and get an invert colour and dissolve node from the tools too. Add some text and connect them like this. So, there are two inputs into the dissolve node, one directly from the text and another through the invert colour. If you look at this, I'm essentially creating a mask with the text. In the text node, I have the text as the mask and in the inverted one, I have everything else. When combining this in the dissolve node and moving the slide, I have an easy way of changing how I apply the mask for this text effect. Oh, and remember to enable invert alpha 2 in the invert color node. If you connect the output from the dissolve node specifically into the multi-merge's mask input, the blue triangle, then you can see this take effect. Once I've found something I like where the shapes are visible, I'll then keyframe this value to cut out the rest of the background once the shapes are in place as so. At this point, it's a good idea to tweak the placement of the shapes so they're fully covering your title, and then add a blur and a glow node in here. A good tip for adding these is if you hold shift while dragging them, it will automatically connect them in on the line you're hovering over. I've keyframed the blur at the same point as the dissolve node and tweaked the glow in here for my liking. Finally, I'll redistribute the timings of my shape's entrance keyframes so things look more natural and random, before then playing back the animation. Hold up, it's me from the edit here, and a quick thing I wanted to note was that if you want to make your animations look natural and realistic, using motion blur is a great way to do it. If you just select a node with any animation on it, go to the settings tab, check the motion blur option, and then you can control the quality and shutter angle to get it looking just how you want. Now back to the title, yes, okay, it's a bit of work, but even just for the lovely unique gradient and glow on the colour of the text, I think it's worth the effort alone. But if you don't agree, or think maybe it's a bit beyond your reach, then don't worry, as you can download the effects as text for free, and then copy and paste them into your own Fusion page to see them there.